Hi, I'm Aaron Jordan, creator of Wolfsbain and Wolfsbanecom.com, and you're listening to Two Geeks Talking. Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. And of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. We are joined on this rapid fire interview with a very talented and creative individual. He was on the show, I believe, last year with an amazing comic that we talked about called Wolfsbane. We are back with the ever-talented Aaron Jordan. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing great, Kurt. It's lovely to be here again. And I gotta say, dude, I love coming back. Well, I love having you back because you always bring something new and interesting to the show. And we talked about Wolfsbane last year, issue one, and we dove really deep into the characters and the themes and everything like that. But you're back again with not only a Kickstarter campaign, but issue two. So for those that don't know anything about yourself as a creative person, tell us who you are and what you're bringing to Two Geeks Talking. So I am a comic writer and I am pretty much bringing a fun new horror project that mixes in the elements of crime and thriller. My book Wolf Spain is pretty much about a strange, mysterious town that's plagued by the supernatural. And the only one that can save it is a teenage werewolf. But the real question is, can he save it from himself or is he doomed to become what he's hunting? So issue two, you had a very action-packed issue one. It was an incredible and amazing to see. You have a Kickstarter campaign currently ongoing here as well too. How's that going and what has been the reaction to the comic so far? So right now we are 75% of the way there. It's daunting, but at the same time, I'm pretty glad to um, have the experience to um, know what's going well and what I need to work on. So far, the reaction I've gotten, I'd say it's pretty well. I'm actually happy to be having the backers I have. Some people from the last issue have been giving me pretty good feedback and they've been keeping me going. How did issue two evolve from when we last spoke and what did you try to update or change not only from your art style, but from your writing as well? Well, issue two's art style, I'd say it's pretty much the same. I kept the same creative team. So far, they're knocking it out of the park of that. And for the writing, I wanted to lean more into the crime aspect a little bit more. We can have a good feel of what I'm trying to go for. The atmosphere, I would say, is a bit more somber in a way. It really makes you think of what's going on and I'm trying to put those pieces together. When we go farther along into the story, it can just hit you like that. So what inspirations this time around did you draw from to create issue two? You said you were diving more into the detective side of things. Oh yeah, pretty much a uh, classic stories. I'd say more of the long the lines. What was that one movie? Uh, Lethal Weapon uh, is a good one. I like the somber moments of that when they're like piecing together the crimes and figuring out where they go from there. And then you have the noir um, style of Casablanca, NCIS a little bit without the hokiness of it. <laughs> I just wanted it to have a feel like that. So how has your main character evolved then from when you wrote issue one? Because last I recall, he was really struggling with his new abilities and his new transformations. But how did he evolve as a character in this issue? Let me actually start with the last issue. In the last issue, you get to see him in his full out wolf, wolf man transformation. Like he's a wild animal and he's just like destroying everything, man. In this one, you actually get to see the human side and the problems that he faces in his regular life. To him, like, you know, to us, it's like he's a werewolf that's got to be terrifying and that's got to suck. But to him, being a human is worse off. Because, you know, he's been dealing with that his entire life. And he's a teenager. He's trying to figure out his place in the world. And he's just trying to figure out what's right for him. So how about issue two then? What does he change or how has he evolved personally? How does he evolve? I'd say he's more unsure of himself. He's trying to play the cool guy and, you know, like not getting too much of a hassle because unlike other werewolf stories where the transformation is triggered by the full moon, his transformations are entirely stress related. Think of it like the hawk. If you get him too riled up, he'll transform. And sometimes he can control his actions and sometimes he can't so it's a real gamble does he have any mentors or any supporting cast that helps him this particular issue well not with the whole werewolf situation yet we'll get to that later on in the issue i wanted to keep that a big surprise for fans of the last issue but 
He does have a mentor who helps him out with his life problems, and that's in the way of his teacher, Mr. Bateman. He's a real philosophical guy, and he's had his own past that he's dealt with. He acts as, you know, his mentor guiding him through anything that he has. Sort of like, I'd say if you read the Spider-Man comics, it's a lot like George Stacy or Uncle Ben, in a way. Hopefully he doesn't die this issue then. I mean, that'd be a real tragic. Oh, nah, nah. Trust me, he, he's good. So he's not pulling a full Uncle Ben, he's just doing a partial Uncle Ben. Oh, exactly, a partial Uncle Ben. <laughs> We're not going to fit him. I can always bring him back as a ghost or something like that, because you have that world, right? I mean... Unfortunately, I had this whole rule set up with my story writing. If I kill a character off, I don't want to really bring them back unless it's something that would make sense in the world. And I don't think I actually uh, made it so ghosts can be a part of this thing. So then, other than werewolves, do we have hints of any other supernatural beings that won't spoil maybe future issues? <laughs> oh yeah, we do. Right now, I can spoil this one because it was actually revealed a few of my other promotions. We have something that hasn't really been done in horror movies before and has rarely been done in other horror media. And that is the Wolfman versus the Gill Man or the creature from the Black Lagoon. Oh, that's cool. Oh yeah, dude. I've been plotting issues four, five, and six. And once we get there it's gonna be a full-out battle you're gonna love it awesome so there's gonna be carnage everywhere on every page right oh yeah yeah definitely <laughs> I love that you're thinking ahead in your story and in your progress as well, too. It's not like you're trying to do it comic by comic. So you have an overall world that you're building up to these six issues. Are we going to get past six issues? Or are we going to switch to a different horror creature like the Gill Man or anything like that? So w with Wolfsbane, I do have things plotted for um, after issue six. And everything depends on my financial situation or how well the comics is received and everything. Yeah, everything's going to be following Lawrence and the people that are close to him. The whole thing is about Lawrence's journey to adulthood and the trials and tribulations that he goes through. He has to figure out, is he more of a man or is he truly a monster? And that goes with almost every other character in the story. That's pretty much what the whole thing is about. So then how have you evolved as a writer going into this particular issue since we last spoke? My pacing has definitely gotten a bit better. In issue one, the things that I could have worked on to uh, make sure the story flowed more properly. There's also with the dialogue. I'm starting to notice some patterns that I've been doing that I'm nipping in the bud right now. So I'm, I'm pretty glad on that. <laughs> Much like your character, you're progressing as a writer as well, too. So that's that's amazing to see. I love that. What are three things that you have accomplished that you're proud of? And what are three things in the future you're looking forward to accomplishing? Okay. The three things that I'm proud of from the last issue is I actually managed to finish a book. That's my first time actually finishing something in terms of my writing. So big yay. Second I managed to ship out all the books that I said I was going to do. All the ones that were, everyone managed to get back to me and all the ones I managed to ship out. Because there are a few that I'm still waiting for them to reply so I can ship the books. Three, I'm just glad that I'm still having fun with this thing, man. Comics are really hard to make. Ooh, shoot, I can't take that lightly anymore. It's just really daunting. I'm still having fun, but ooh, takes a lot. <laughs> So then what three things are you looking forward to accomplishing in your creative career so far? What I'm looking forward to accomplishing right now is, first of all, finishing all six issues. I want to get to a point where I can have a, another story that I'm working on off the ground. It's going to be an epic fantasy story. And I can't wait for that one to take off. You know, was there a comic that you read before you started putting together Wolfsbane Spain that you wanted to make Wolfsbane Spain like so that people who read your comic would appreciate it as you appreciated the comic you read that inspired you to get to where you are? I'm not sure um, if I read anything because most of my inspirations come from things like movies and stuff like that. But if I were to pick something that I would read, yeah, a lot of the classic horror literature stories like Frankenstein, Dracula, The Invisible Man, stuff like that, where you focus on the dread that the story um, tells you, the lingering suspense that tickled your spine as you turn the page. It, all that stuff is really fascinating to me, and I hope that I can bring that out in this book. What are three good werewolf films that people should watch if they haven't maybe 
watch that particular genre? Well, recently I was on Brian Criscow's channel. He's a pretty good guy. I had to watch Bad Moon. That's a really good horror movie. It actually plays on the werewolf tropes a little bit, and it does it in a really good way. Um, pretty underrated film. How is another one of those where you have the werewolf and you have these guys that are trapped on a train and they just got to survive the night. And the one scene with the werewolf when they first introduced it, it is so scary and hilarious at the same time. You're going to want to check it out. I can't spoil it. And another underrated one, I'd say, is Del Toro's The Wolfman, um, which was released in 2010. That one, if you're just looking for a good narrative aspect and something that has a lot of good gore and um, action scenes, then you're going to want to check that one out, too. The actual story or the acting may not be good coming from, like, a supporting cast, but it's still a good ride. In terms of uh, Kickstarter tiers, the Kickstarter itself, when does it end and, and what other tiers were you trying this time around that maybe were was a little different from your first Kickstarter? Okay. So right now at 8.15, February 19th, that's when the Kickstarter ends. And we actually did start, we actually did try a few more things to make it easier for backers to get what they wanted. So we have a choose what you want tier, pledge $1, because for some reason Kickstarter won't let you pledge pledge zero. But you pledge one dollar and you can get anything we have from the add-ons here, which is like all the books and whatnot. And you can just plop that in your cart. That makes it easier for you in case like you wanted a specific book from a specific tier. And then we also have retailer bundle box, which if you are a retailer, you can go up there, you get five books from Wolf, um, Wolf Spain 1, and then you also get five choices of your Wolf Spain 2 cover. Everyone has one person that inspired them on their path to where they are today. Who was that for you? I would say I have a few. Alex Ross, his painted style and visual storytelling is, is always fun and amazing to see. You have a lot of the old Marvel writers in the past, especially Jim Sterling. Jim Sterling, or Starling, my bad. It, I'm not good with names, but yeah. He's the guy that did Captain Marvel, a lot of the stuff with like the galactic, the cosmic entities, Thanos and all that. He's really good at world building and figuring out where everything fits into the world. And I'd say, who was that? Uh, Mary Shelley. She was one of the first to bring her to life. I'm really thankful for that. Literally, in, in with the case of Frankenstein. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice segue. <laughs> From a professional standpoint, you've created, of course, this amazing series called Wolf Spain, and you've had issue one succeed, and issue two, I'm sure, will be a success as well. So professionally, you're successful in that regard. Do you consider yourself personally successful? I'd say so, because I think there are a lot of people who haven't really gotten to my position, how big or small it is. I'm always thankful for that and for the fans that I have gotten along the way. It truly means a lot to me that you guys are showing your support, getting me to where I want to be. Thank you. The reverse of success is failure. How do you deal with your failures? You know, everyone fails. As human beings, we're just designed to fail. All depends on how we pick ourselves back up and how we deal with those failures so that they don't happen again. The younger generation is looking at your work and they're becoming inspired or creative in their own way, whether it's as a comic writer or creator of some kind, shape, or form in the entertainment. Maybe you've inspired them. How can they inspire the generation that follows them? Well, always be true to yourself and look at where you want to be in life and set goals for yourself so that you can obtain them. Speaking from personal experience, I didn't think that I'd be working in comics, even though this is a really good job. I, I never thought that I'd be able to do something like this in a positive manner. Basically, just keep on pushing, to be honest. If your life was a film or a comic book, what would its title be? And what would its soundtrack be? Ah, that's actually a pretty good question. I would say the title would be, I'm really a fan of simple word titles, you know? So I would have to say um, persistence and a good theme, something that's a uh, monotone with serious vibe, but with some lax music in the background. I try to be focused on, you know, like what I want to do and what I want to be. I'm learning to try not to take things as serious as I perceive them to be. I'm making progress. 
<laughs> well, I do hate to say it, but that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking Air. And I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. Hey, no problem, man. I really appreciate you having me on here. Before I let you go, where can we find you? How can we support you? And of course, where can we find the Kickstarter campaign as well, too? Okay. You can find me at wolfsbanecomics.com. We're launching the site in late March. And you can also find me at my handle, Wolfsbane Comics, at Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and now TikTok. If you guys like that stuff, we're planning more fun videos along the way. I just got to figure out what I'm going to do. You know, besides promotion. You can find the Kickstarter at Wolfsbane. Spain in sheep clothing part two of six in Roman numerals. We only have a few hours to go. I'd say less than 60 at, by the time of this video. Um, if we don't manage to fund, we're definitely going to be re relaunching again. Be on the lookout for that in case you guys were, are excited. Well, that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. You can, of course, find this interview and a thousand plus others on our website, tgtmedia.com or twogeekstalking.com. That's the word two, not the number two. On our YouTube channel, which is a lot more updated than our website, which is YouTube youtube.com forward slash c forward slash tgt media and the podcast is back after 12 or so years and you can find that at two geeks talking .com. and as i say every week everyone has a story to tell it's up to me to help bring that out thanks for listening and watching on two geeks talking